Hello. Um, welcome to the first episode of two on Bertrand Russell. I'm going to try to do this in uh, landscape view because I think the videos look nicer. So let's see how this works. I won't try to get too many super close-ups of my face like I did last time I tried this method. So Bertrand Russell is one of my favorite philosophers. I almost wrote my dissertation on him. At one point I was thinking about it anyway. This reading that we have on tap is all about um, the problem we left off with last time about how do we go from how do we go from um, sense data or the images in our mind uh, and get out of our head and reach the things in the external world. So this first lecture video vlog is gonna be focused on um, what Russell calls sense data. And we're gonna talk a little bit about universals. And we might start also talking a little bit about um, what uh, knowledge by description is supposed to mean. Oh, right, and we're gonna talk about acquaintance. We definitely have to talk about acquaintance in this video. Maybe descriptions for the next one. Okay, so sense data. <coughs> sense data are something we've already sort of talked about. They are the name for the mental things, uh, the images and the sounds and the smells and the tastes that we um, perceive directly in our mind. They're mental things, they're not physical objects, and they are the sort of um, <coughs> fundamental source of knowledge according to Russell. Um, Russell's an empiricist, so he thinks all of our knowledge comes through experience, but he's also kind of Cartesian in the sense that he thinks that the things we are directly aware of are our own mental states, or our own, they're these mental things that we perceive uh, directly. So <clears throat> sense data are things that we can't be deceived about by an evil demon. Um, the thing that the demon does to deceive us would be to put sense data in our mind. I'm just drawing a connection between uh, Russell and, and Descartes. He's not really interested in talking about demons or anything like that, but he is interested in trying to understand how we can have knowledge of the external world if the only thing we're acquainted with, as he says, is our sense data. So the next thing to talk about then is acquaintance. So acquaintance is this direct cognitive relationship. It's the relationship of being directly aware of something without inter any intermediary uh, coming between you and the thing. So um, I'm not acquainted with the bush, not acquainted with the tree. What I'm acquainted with are my sense data, inner mental things. Um, I have a direct relationship with those things. I'm walking around Somerville again. So another thing about acquaintance is um, when you're acquainted with something, you know it completely. You know everything there is to know about it. There's nothing further to discover. Um, unlike the things in the world, we perceive an aspect of them or we perceive a mental representation of them, but we don't, we're not acquainted with the whole thing. So like when I look at this tree, I mean, the mental image is of um, a surface, I guess. It's an image of a surface. So I get the front-facing surface of the thing. Uh, I'm not acquainted with the whole tree in all of its uh, detail. But when I have the mental image in front of my mind, it's as if I get the whole... Uh, everything that's in my mind, I'm, I'm fully aware of. There's nothing behind the mental image. <laughs> It's hard to demonstrate this because it's inside my mind, what I'm trying to show you. But if you imagine that the thing that I'm seeing is a mental image of this tree, and the mental image is sort of just the front-facing surface. There's nothing in my mind that's the, the back of the sense data. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, 
Take this telephone pole, for example. So like Descartes, Russell thinks that we're only directly aware of a mental image in my own mind. The mental image is the thing that he calls the sense data. Uh, and so the things that we're acquainted with, immediately directly aware of, are the sense data. And in this case, the sense data, the visual sense data, um, represent or resemble the surface of the telephone pole. And again, we're not acquainted with the pole itself. We're only acquainted with our own mental imagery. All right, I don't have time to do the full lecture right now. I'm only on a short walk. So I'll have to pick this up on a different walk. You're probably going to experience some discontinuity watching this video because it's probably going to be cold or rainy or something tomorrow. So, okay, be right back. <laughs> Okay, I'm back and it's the next day and it's a lot colder. So I switched to my warmer coat, but um, hold on. Okay, so a couple more things to say about um, knowledge by acquaintance. Um, one of them is, <clears throat> so the way Russell talks about it, we have knowledge by acquaintance and that he contrasts with knowledge by description. And so knowledge by acquaintance, that's the kind of knowledge you have of your own mind, your own sense data that you're in your mind. But you don't have knowledge by acquaintance of things in the world, physical objects. So we're not, we don't know them by acquaintance. We know physical objects by description. Um, Russell's case that he uses is his, um, he talks about his desk. I noticed that um, philosophers, philosophers love to talk about tables and writing desks because they're usually just sitting in their um, study or whatever. So this picture from the slides shows a table and that's the physical table on the left, and then the person looking on the right, and then in the middle is the intervening sense datum. That's the image that the person sees in their mind. And they're just writing about like the table they're sitting in front of. So our examples are different because we're outside. So, so like I keep thinking of trees. Um, the idea is that I'm, I'm acquainted with my sense data of the tree, um, but I'm not acquainted with the tree. So I know I have knowledge by acquaintance of my own sense data, but I don't have knowledge by acquaintance of the tree. Um, when I know the tree, I know it by description. And that's a, this is just a preview of the next video, but to know something by description is to have a sort of proposition or sentence um, that uses um, sort of logical language to describe an object in the physical world in a way that lets you think about it without being acquainted with it. Um, so that's what knowledge by description is. That's gonna be the focus of the next video. I just wanna talk a little bit more about knowledge by acquaintance first um, before we wrap up this video. I'm trying to keep this one a little bit shorter than my last one, so. Okay, so when we know uh, a thing by acquaintance, um, as I was saying last time, you know the, the thing that you're acquainted with completely and totally. That's only really possible with mental imagery. Um, so the mental imagery of the tree that's in your mind, you can know completely and totally, but you don't know completely and totally the physical object that your sense data are representing. Now, Russell says we're not only acquainted with our sense data, we're also acquainted with what he calls universals. Universals are a tricky metaphysical concept. Um, you also, people call them properties sometimes, um, although I might bother some metaphysicians by running those two things together. But the idea of, is with a universal, it's a thing that many different particulars can share. So, <clears throat> like color is a good example. So the color of the tree, we shouldn't talk about the color of the tree itself, but the color of your mental sense data of the tree, the inner image of the tree. Um, <clears throat> that sense data has a color, and the color of that sense data can be identical, the very same color as uh, your sense data of a different tree or of a different part of the tree or something like that. So if the tree has the same color on, I mean, obviously it has <laughs> many colors, many different colors, but uh, <clears throat> the color of this lichen on the tree uh, is a universal. The lichen 
sense data that you're getting here has the same color as the lichen sense data that you're getting over there. So the idea is color is an example of a universal. It's not a particular thing. Um, <clears throat> it, it, uh, something you encounter in multiple different uh, sense data. So when Russell says <clears throat> that you're acquainted with universals, that is somehow by experiencing an image, a, a mental image, you also experience the color of that image. And the color of that image is something that's shared by many uh, different sense data. So a universal is something that's shared among many different particulars. Particular is a specific thing, like this particular stop sign. Um, the idea of a universal is something which is instantiated by many different particulars. So with the stop sign, you've all seen many different stop signs and they're all red. They all share the same universal of redness. They all instantiate the same color. Um, so the role of the universal is very important when it comes to bridging the gap between uh, your mind and the world. Because the idea is your sense data present you with um, images and those images uh, have universals and you become acquainted with the universals by having many different sense data experiences. So he talks about becoming aware of the universal. So you get aware of the universal of blueness from looking at the sky, for example, but it's not enough that you just see in the sky. You have to see many different examples of things that are blue. So you see many, many instances and um, build up an awareness of this universal, but you're acquainted with the universal in your own experience. And then once you have acquaintance with the universal, you can use that. Um, you can now think about the universal blueness or something like that. And <clears throat> then you can use that to, so here's some other cases, right? So these street signs are blue. So <clears throat> in my mind, I have uh, a mental image of the street sign, but the way that I get to knowledge by description is I use my acquaintance with the universals um, and I will state a thought that says something like the thing which is blue and, and rectangular and has white shapes of such and such kind. That's how I get out of my mind to the thing in the environment. So I take, I take my um, vocabulary of universals and I use that vocabulary to describe something. And then the thing which satisfies that description, the thing that the description is true of, is the thing that I'm thinking of. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's an, again, this is a preview of uh, knowledge by description. I'm bringing it up right now to tell you, to try to explain why we care about talking about universals right now. Um, but so the basic idea is that we're acquainted with our sense data, we're acquainted with universals. Russell says we may or may not be acquainted with ourselves, but that's pretty much all we're acquainted with. That's everything we have immediate direct access to. Everything else is inferred or logically constructed. Um, what that means has to do with what it means to, to know something by description. Um, okay. So <clears throat> I think that's, that's kind of everything I wanted to cover. Oh, one other thing that I go over in the slides, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people have thought of this before. Um, so when we look at the sky, we look at the blue sky, we're all ready to agree that that's called blue, right? We all see that it's blue in some sense, and we all agree to call it blue. Um, but what if what you see as blue is not the same thing that I see as blue? So maybe the color that you call blue is, is also, I mean, it's the color that I call blue too. Um, but when I look at the sky, I see this and you see that. So what's the significant, the point of saying that we see uh, sense data, well, I mean, this isn't the point of saying that, but once you, if you start thinking like Russell does, that the thing we're immediately acquainted with are our own mental images, that opens the question, I mean, it raises the question, um, are the universals that I'm seeing in my uh, sense data that I'm directly aware of the same ones that you're aware of um, in yours? So... <clears throat> There are two things going on like one of them is a uh, problem of coordination and we're able to solve that we both agree to call things red or blue in coordinated ways 
But there's this other question, like inside of my mind, is it the same thing as what's inside of your mind? When you look at blueness, when you look at something blue like the sky, do you see the same color I do, even though we both agree to call it blue? Let's put it one more way. So we'll all agree that this car is red and that the do not enter sign is red. These two do not enter signs are both red. They instantiate the same universal. Um, <clears throat> but how do I know that when I look at this thing, my experience is exactly the same as your experience? So when I experience this sign, I have something that looks like this. And maybe when you experience it, you have something that looks like this. But we managed to coordinate together. You consistently see, every time you see this color here, you see the same color here, right? So <clears throat> you're able to re-identify, you know, the same thing each time. Um, and similarly, I, I call this red, even though what I see is different from what you see. So we're able to both agree on the sentence, uh, this do not enter sign is red, but we could agree on that without actually having the same experience. Um, <clears throat> this also leads us into a place of wondering, <laughs> you know, how can I ever know for sure? I mean, if you're following along the thought process, you should realize we just can't know each other's inner sense data. I can only coordinate with you about the external things, but I can never get inside your mind and see what it's actually like to be experiencing the world from your subjective point of view. Um, and once you start thinking along those lines, you start wondering like, how do I even know that other people have inner lives or inner minds? Uh, how do I know people have subjective experiences? I mean, I'm only able to access my own subjective experience I can assume that you have a subjective, a subjective experience, something like me, because we're able to coordinate similarly on the external world. You'll tell me things like you see colors. You'll tell me the sky is blue. Um, but since I don't know what your inner sense data are like, or even if there are any sense data there, uh, this is a kind of problem. They call it the problem of other minds. It's a puzzle. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, how do you know that other people have minds or that their minds are the same, anything like what it's like to be you? Okay, so I also said that um, stop signs all instantiate the same color. But again, once you switch to this sense state of you and you realize that, you know, all of us have, could have different uh, sense data in our minds, different colors in our sense data, right? You could see this and I could see that. Um, then you might ask the question, you know, what's the real color of the stop sign? Does one of us see it accurately and the other doesn't see it accurately? Or it would be pretty weird to say, you know, one of us is really right and the other one is really wrong, especially since no one can tell sort of what the real color is. And this whole line of thinking has led people to suppose, uh, you know, things don't really have colors. At least this is one line of thought that has gotten us to this uh, idea that the world doesn't really have colors. Colors are just in the mind. We sort of project them out where Another way of putting it is we experience sense data, the sense data have colors and they represent the world in sort of systematic ways, but that's just a feature of our own inner mental world. It's not really uh, part of the external world. So at this point, I feel a need to point out that most philosophers of perception working in the field today do not believe in sense data. I mean, Bertrand Russell is writing this in 1912 and there have been lots of uh, thinkers thinking about the question since then. And <clears throat> the majority of philosophers of perception think that uh, some other theory of perception is right, that we're not directly acquainted with inner mental images. Um, we're actually directly perceiving or somehow directly representing the uh, environment, the things in the environment. And some of those philosophers would argue 
that things really do have colors. It's not just a mental thing, but it's actually colors are in the world. Now, I don't know if that's the mainstream uh, consensus opinion. I bet there's no consensus, but I just wanted to flag the issue um, so that people are aware of uh, what the cutting edge is in the 21st century. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do for the rest of this. Uh, this lecture is gonna continue focusing on knowledge by description and how that's supposed to work.